Jesus Christ, it's finally over. It's fi Let me just compose myself for one second. Whew. Hit the like button. Come on, get it, son. Come on, what a win that was. Sullen have just beat Burnley by a goal to nil. And who scores? Who puts it in the back of the net? The replacement, the Jack Lot regen, the man who may or may not have a salon clause in his contract. Remain Mondal sticks it in the back of the net. And that isn't it. That isn't it. There's so much drama to get through in this game. Remain Mondal though. Gives us the goal, it gives us three points at the stage of a light against Burnley, you know. I've seen a lot of Burnley fans prior to the game online. They weren't particularly confident, they weren't happy with the lineup. I know they've had little things going on here and there, but they, they still are a very, very good side. They're going to be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. There's still a hell of a lot of quality within that side that was put out today. And my God, did we put in a performance to make us proud. So we'll get into it. So the lineup was pretty much unchanged, of course. Well, other than the obvious, which was uh, with Jack Clark. Um, he wasn't anywhere to be seen. There was footage of him leaving the ground before the game. So I don't know whether he's just come to say his goodbyes to, to everybody. Um, but Mundell was his replacement. And I was saying online before the game, <laughs> I was saying the buzz... The feeling will hit so, so hard if he's the one who gets the goal today and look what goes and happens. But anyway, we get into the game and opening 25 minutes, with no exaggeration, was some of the best football I've seen in a while. And we only played Chef Wednesday in 1-4-0 last week. And honestly, it was the press was outstanding. That's something we're going to hear so much this season. Apologies for the lighting. I've got a window here and I can't stop the lighting. It's making me look sunburnt as shit, actually, now I'm looking at the camera. But either way, as you can tell, very excited. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I've lost my fucking mind here. But yeah, the opening 25 minutes, I think the only thing you could see straight away is that Burnley had, all they had was lumping it over the top in behind Luke O'Neill. Because, of course, he doesn't quite have the, the pace as the likes of Alessi or you got Circuit on one side and Hume. It, their side they were kind of aiming for. But either O'Neill would win the foot race or Hume would tuck in and, and get there first anyway. So it just wasn't working. But what we were doing, the... the Press the team press was absolutely outstanding. The the squeeze of the triangles were forcing them to error after error after error. They couldn't string three or four passes together without someone just hitting them or getting in the way or intercepting. Job was absolutely outstanding in the middle with Dan Neal, Chris Rigg as well. Of course, we'll get onto the sending off of uh, Dan Neal later on. Uh, Paddy Roberts as well. I'm just going to jump straight to it. That man was absolutely flawless today, Paddy Roberts. The amount of times that he just dragged us up. You know, single-handedly, you know, the amount of times I've said uh, Jack Clark last season did it when everyone else were playing shit and then Jack Clark has dragged us up for, so would drag us up field and, uh, and work his magic. He was doing it every time he got the ball. Every time he got the ball, he'd wriggle past the Burnley man or it would be a perfect touch to do a quick one-two with someone else. But there was him, Rig, and, uh, and Hume. It was almost like when Diallo was around and they had those little triangles. That was going on constantly. Mundell on the left-hand side was absolutely terrorising them. Straight away, they were making chances. Either Mundell going on the left-hand side, Roberts on the other, pinging balls across goal that just weren't quite uh, meeting anybody. We were having little half chances, little half shots here and there. Then eventually... The time does come. The ball gets put across goal. It's a lovely ball to, uh, to Paddy Roberts. He tries to sort of volley it in at a very tight angle on the right-hand side. But he goes straight back across goal, straight back away the way it came from. Force to Mundell. Everyone kind of stops for a minute because he looks like he's offside. But he just cuts inside and he just buries it with such some pace, tenacity into that bottom right-hand corner to beat the keeper. 1-0. Thoroughly deserved. And we didn't stop there. We were having chance after chance after chance. We're, again, with Roberts cutting in and having strikes. Rig, Dan Neal as well. There was just at times we were queuing up on the edge of the box, and the only frustration, I guess, the only player that I can kind of not knock, but the only thing that was probably a little bit frustrating was Mayenda in the sense that you know his pressing was fantastic, just as good as anyone else's. Link up play at times was very good. However, you'd think that after the last weekend, after you'd think that that would really boost his, his sort of morale and his confidence. But there were times where we were, we were literally finding him. And rather than just hitting it first time, take a touch, then another, and he'd lose the ball. Or just a frustration of a very good ball that would find him in space, and his touch would just balloon away. Little chances like that were just kind of passing him by, and that was very, very frustrating. But other than that, we utterly dominated. Now, I knew for a fact that you know, after 20, 25 minutes, when we just utterly dominated anyway, we weren't allowing them anything. Straight in the face, everyone's working together. And the good thing that I was... Sorry, I keep going off topic here because I'm so excited, and I'm rambling like there's no tomorrow, as you can see. 
But what I was really, really excited to see and was really happy to see was not just the press going forward, but when we did lose the ball going forward, the immediate... Uh, so the, the, the regaining of our shape and tracking back so quickly in the pace of it and the tempo of it was ridiculous. There, I think there was one time in particular, I think it was about 35, 40 minutes, where we were just pinning them back and we were putting the ball in the box. It was, I think it was a port cross from Dan Neal and it was headed away. And then one moment, it was three on one, but then you just saw a perfect line of Sunderland players busting a gut to get back. Well, you know, maybe last year or whenever, a few months ago, you might get one or two stragglers Every fucker was absolutely busting a gut. Everyone knew where to hold. Everyone knew where to keep running. And everyone held the line perfectly. And we managed to get back at pace. And we, before we knew it, it looked like it was 3-1 and in their favour. And like that, we have everyone back. It, it was just so good to see. I love to see that. But then, of course, I didn't expect this high press to last the entirety of the half. Sorry, the entirety of the half. And with the quality of Burnley as well. At some point, they're going to get the foot hold of the ball. And they didn't get it until about the sort of 40, 41st minute where we did start to sit back a little bit. But it, it, in those moments, it weren't like... You can see we were tired because it was such a, a fast, high press. And it does take a lot of energy. And as I say, it's unrealistic to expect a team to do a high press for 90 minutes in a football game. It'd never work. Impossible. So I was expecting it for a minute. But even when we were just sort of sitting back, everyone was as a unit. Everyone was moving across. There weren't gaps all over the shot. And their first shot of the game came in the 46th, 47th minute when the three, man, sorry, three minutes added on. Ball got put in. Um, I think no one was really switched on because we didn't switch. He was playing in quickly and Hume really should have got there. But it was put over the top of uh, O'Neill and their, their forward. They had a free header and Hume wasn't anywhere to be seen. So it wasn't quite switched on. Um, he should have really at least tested the keeper, but he's kind of just sort of nonchalantly just kind of tapped it and headed it way wide, which was a stranger. And I thought he'd at least you know, put a bit of power on it. It worked like he was outstretched or anything. It seemed a pretty simple opportunity. But fortunately for us, it came to nothing. Second half comes and we, we allowed it. We, I felt like we were a little bit more loose in the second half in terms of our, our press was still there. It remained, it was decent. But then when we won the ball, rather than just being sort of confident, keeping hold of it, Ping, 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 which isn't always going to happen. You know, the little triangles, as, as he alluded to. That kind of died down a little bit, and then we were turning over possession or giving away possession far too easily for my liking. But then as soon as Burnley would get it, it would be the exact same thing, and there was a lot of that. Mundell had another great opportunity. And by the way, I know I'm going to keep on singing his praises because that, that was a big, you know, step up today for him. You know, to do it, not just in a friendly, but against one of the best sides in the league. We need to give all credit to Mundell for that. But this chance I was talking about, he literally took on one play. He looked like he could have gone to ground, but he didn't stay up. Took on two, took on three, four, turns inside. He's about to strike it and it gets blocked. But it just shows he's so up for it and he's so raw, but that quality is absolutely there. But the game was starting to die down a little bit, was a little bit back and forth, but still they didn't have one chance, not one shot really. They were starting to put balls down their wings and try to find something and a couple of little scrambles around the box, but we're defending as a unit brilliantly well. Luke O'Neill and Adji Alessi, brilliant. Sirkin was outstanding on that left-hand side. So many interceptions. The only one thing I could say about Sirkin was even remotely negative today was his end product at times. Um, when usually he's very good going forward, he made the interception and he may have taken one player, but then it would be running straight into trouble as opposed to his, his quick passing, which he usually is very, very good at. And that was only the second half, to be fair. Other than that, he was generally very good. This is me just trying to nitpick at what was a, almost a seemingly perfect performance. Um, but then Alan Brown come on, Rig come off. Good to see Brown back. Ballard was on the bench as well, who come on later on. Pervader was on the bench as well, so it was exciting to see. Um, uh, Brown come on, immediately made a contribution. Quick little one-two with Paddy Roberts and another chance. And there were just so many opportunities in about a 10-minute period where Roberts was just utterly taking the piss and now go for goal himself or he'd try and slide in um, someone like a Mayenda, but he just wasn't switched on. No one was, no one was kind of on the same wavelength as Roberts. And it was just taking the piss. And then when he was trying to do the like, sort of cheeky balls inside, no one was switched on. Or my end might take a heavy touch and the chance would be gone. Um, or again, to the byline, put it across goal, no one's there. Those kind of moments. And Paddy Roberts made so many of those kind of opportunities all day long. Um, but then what was quite frustrating, because it seemed like it was dying down a little bit and we're in control. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to see Pervader come on and make his debut in front of the, the stadium of light. And... Um, he was, he, was, he was all dressed, all ready to come on. And then Dan Neal gets a second yellow card. And it was, it was stupid. I think it was for dissent the first one anyway, which was early in the first. 
in the first half. Job made a challenge in the first half, and then Danny, I think he, he gobbed off to the ref, got himself a booking, which is ridiculous anyway. And to be fair, this referee, I'm sure Burnley fans will agree at times. I know they're definitely going to say that he was in favour of us because in the first half, every little niggle they give it us, they would get, he was giving it in our favour, but equally was kind of doing the same. But we just weren't as sort of niggly as they are or, or, or as they were, should I say. But every foul was almost met with a bucket at times. It was, it felt like that. But then, uh, but yeah, so their, their left back was trying to break away. Um, but it was, it was like in a sort of left back position, so there was no need for it. And Dan's just absolutely clattered him and taken him out. And it's a, a second bookable offence. And which and what was really frustrating then, as I say, Pervader was just about to come on, but then they've told him to put his training kit back on, get back in the bench, because now we need defenders. So we stuck on Ballard and, uh, and Triantis, which was nice to see next to Triantis in, in the Sunderland shirt again. And we defended for our lives, absolutely defending for our lives. Roosin come on as well to try to press the line. He did very well at holding up the play when we needed to. And we just defended for our lives. And then um, we managed to see it out. And like I say, I've literally the second the game finished, I've just gone in front of the camera. And only now I've started breathing because honestly, I was that close to throwing up towards the back end of that game. But it just shows, you know, I'm not going to use this as just a big sort of platform to say, you know, fuck Jack Clark or, or, you know, we don't need him type thing. But life does go on and there is positives. And that is what I tried to explain in my video earlier today. You know, we've just beaten arguably one of the best teams in the league without Jack Clark. So we can do it and we can put in a shift. We had, today we saw so many sides of the Sunderland team. We saw the nitty gritty side of, of pressing and the tracking back, which was outstanding, which doesn't probably get shined on enough. Don't get enough light enough, should I say. And going forward, we're exciting. There's a brand of football here to work with that doesn't need and rely solely on Jack Clark, which is what we've done for years. So yes, it's upsetting. He was our best player. Some of these players are going to stand up and make themselves counted for this year. And it's going to be exciting if we continue with this. What's frustrating is that we don't, we don't get this um, sort of continuity now because Dan Neal's going to be uh, away for a, for a few games now with that, with that sending off, which is very, very frustrating. Um, because we're just starting to see the team gel with with Job, Rig and, uh, and, and Dan Neal in there. But now we've got someone like an Alan Brown, who I think is a fantastic player. Alan Brown, Job and Rig in there. I don't think that'll be a bad shout either, but... But yeah, absolutely fantastic, guys. Absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry if I'm just rambled away. As you can tell, I'm just stupidly excited. And I was so nervous. And the anxiety is just slowly slipping out of me. I'm probably going to fall asleep the second I stop recording this. <laughs> I'm such a child. But anyway, man of the match for me, Paddy Roberts. He absolutely took the piss. And he looked, he looked, he looked elite. He looked, he looked a level above everyone on the pitch today. And there was some outstanding performances within that Sunderland side as well. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so that's it, guys. Tell me what you guys think. I've probably missed something out because I'm rambling and I'm excited and I'm a child. But there we go. How are the lads? Come on. Like, subscribe, stay jammy, enjoy your weekend. Top of the league. Get in.